Hey, I wanted to give you an update on the handy magnet dispensers that I uploaded to printables a couple of weeks ago and I did a video about it. So I've uploaded a new version and I want to talk about what I did differently. This new version I think is, a, is an improvement and I'm going to mark that original upload I did as a deprecated model and you really should download version 2. I want to thank user steves42 on printables.com for downloading and checking out my model and giving me some feedback on the, the round one. I had always intended from the, actually when I even uploaded the first version, I was planning on adding my fusion source files to the, to that upload. And I've been at this, for, I've been at this for like two weeks. Uh, as much as I love fusion, it can drive me crazy. So the problem was I wanted the, the fusion model to be based on user parameters and I won't go too deep into it, but basically you don't need to know a lot about modeling in fusion necessarily. You can just open up the design and change the values of the user parameters for things like the dimensions of your magnet. I've got a, a rectangular and a circular ver cylindrical version, the height of the dispenser and clearances for your printer and so on. And Fusion generally does pretty well with user parameters. It makes designing really flexible and easy to change things. But there are also times when changing those parameters can cause all kinds of problems in your design timeline, throwing warnings and errors and all kinds of problems. And that's what I was been dealing with for a couple of weeks. And I've been using Fusion for a long time. And like I said, sometimes it can drive me crazy and I, I mostly love it. But this was one of those uh, projects where it drove me crazy. Long story short, I finally got there. I'm happy with the design. You can go in and change user parameters and it doesn't break things too badly unless you really get crazy with some of the numbers. So that's my story. And I'm gonna, wanted to show you some of the changes I made. I'm gonna flip to the mess on my desk here in a minute and show you kind of the past version and what changes I made in the new one and we'll we'll go from there and if you you know have any questions uh, comments please give me your feedback in the comments I I read them all I don't have that big a following so you can uh, you can rest assured you if you leave a comment or have a question you'll get a response pretty quickly so thanks again for stopping by and checking this out I hope you do find this to be an improvement and yeah if you use these little tiny magnets. I think you'll find this is kind of a neat little handy tool to have in your toolbox. So let's uh, take a look at my desk and I'll tell you what's going on there. So here is this little pile of shrapnel is all the testing and stuff I've been doing. This model here is the original uh, round version, the six millimeter one that I uploaded. And it worked pretty good for me, but user Steve s42 on printables did download it and give me some feedback and one of those things was the that the for him the the fit of the the magnet was a little loose and it could pop out of the side too easy i kind of found the same thing as i've been using this it, it got pretty loose here and you know tighter clearances would help but the other thing i think is happening is because the uh, top is not closed off here it kind of stretches a little bit and it makes it easier for the magnets to kind of fall out of there really easy. There's not a much friction. So I have an improvement to that. The other thing is the slider did not wrap all the way around the unit. And so it's a little floppier depending again on your clearances. And then the other model that I included was this one initially, which actually works quite well. And I like the tolerances, but my original idea was that you could load this like a Pez candy dispenser, and it actually works that way, but in hindsight, I wish I had enclosed it, because it actually, I think, will work a little better. Because there are times when the magnets can kind of flex out like this, and it, that not that it's a big deal, but it's just, I don't know, it, it, it's not quite right, so we can do better. Oh, and the other thing is I added this little stand with a magnet so you can kind of attach it anywhere, which works actually here I got my... Bang, I've got my coffee can here so you can see see how well that worked. Yeah, not too bad. And of course these magnets have a mind of their own and decide to jumping everywhere. So anyway, I got to redesigning and doing some more test prints and you can see here are my failures. So here was one of my last attempts where it just the clearances were just way too tight. You know, it kind of works and it might, if I keep working it, it might loosen up, but yeah, that was way too tight. This is the attempt before that where this one was, I guess the clearances were okay, but had a little more bulk than I wanted and 
again, I thought I could do better. And then this one I screwed up. It didn't even fit in the, uh, the stand. But you can see how I struggled. Yeah, the problem with this one now is the removing the kind of the built-in support that I modeled was a little too tight and actually got a little precarious using the the razor knife and having fingers relatively close. So what I did, because the user parameters are set not only for the size of the magnet, you can set the height of the dispenser. So what I did is I just created some tests where I created a really short dispenser so I could print it quick and test clearances and make sure everything fit. So I'm gonna put all of this aside because these are, these are gonna go into the spare pile bin somewhere. These are some other original ones here. Again, these worked okay, but I didn't like the front loading looseness of the Pez style candy dispenser that these work. So here's my latest one, and I have one of these I still need to break loose, the one for the round magnets, and this is how it came off the print bed, this pair. And then this model I already broke loose as a test before I did the video. This is for my 4x10 rectangular magnet. So this prints just as you see here, and then the idea is this is a built-in support that prints in place so the model is like so on the print bed. And then you just take, if everything works well, you take your uh, a little um, utility knife and just nip the corners. It's just connected at the corners and then this falls off. And then what you end up with was this is a, there's about a 0.3 or 0.4 millimeter bridge, depending on what you prefer for your printer. I printed these at point two layer height. And so I did use two layers of 0.4 basing in there. So this is a little bit stuck when it comes off the printer, and that's where the the stand kind of doubles as a, uh, as a persuader, as I call it. So when you get the uh, built-in support taken off, this fits right on top, and then you can hold it and just take your great-grandfather's ball-peen hammer, if you have one, and just give it a couple of taps. And what that does is it breaks loose the slider, so it works. So this I'm really happy with. It's it's a little, just loose enough, surrounded on four sides. The magnets fit pretty snug, which I prefer. And full disclosure, I, I did work these a little bit before I started filming the video, but you can see they they slide pretty cleanly, and they're not it's not hard to operate to get a magnet out of there. So we can slide them in, slide them out, and it works really well. So now that I have this, these clearances dialed in for this print, I will, I'll scale this up and make a full size one. Okay, it's a few hours later and I got my full size prints done. Uh, came out pretty good. Had a little bit of warping. You can see that, yeah, and this, on this one on the corner, but I don't think it's going to be a problem because that's going to be the piece that breaks off. So I'm going to go ahead and get my test pieces out of the way here. And we'll get these broken loose. I did start this already on a couple of them just to make sure they were going to break loose okay. But yeah, we just kind of get in the, get in the groove here a little bit and make sure... We are doing this safely and not going to cut a finger. And it did get a little snug where the warping occurred, so I'm going to carefully try to flex that. No, that's not going to work. So this one might need a little extra help because of the way it warped on that one corner. So I'm going to just take this and cut it loose. Okay, that seemed to have broken loose pretty good and then just popped right off. Got a little bit of scarring right on the slider there. We can clean that off. All right, that looks good. And if we didn't uh, we didn't weld too badly here, we just need to whoa, that even I didn't even need the persuader. I just was able to persuade it with my fingers. Yeah, that came out great. Let's see how our magnets fit. Yeah, it's a little snug, which is normal when you first push them in. But let's uh, let's take a couple here and see. There we go. Yeah, I think this is going to work. Yeah, there we go. Just needed a little a little push to get them started, and yeah, in they go. That looks great. So just a little, little push of the slider here. We can dispense our magnets. 
Yep, that works really good. Uh, just a little snug, which is the way I like it. Yeah, I'm really happy with that one. Okay, let's see how our rectangular one came out. This one, I don't detect any warping on, so this one should break loose a little easier. And I did do a couple corners already. Yeah, that one's much easier to break. Sorry about the lighting there. I'll get my shadow out of the way. Yeah, that just popped right off. Let's see if this one uh, breaks loose as easy without... Yeah, it's a little more... That one might need a little more help. So we'll take the rectangular stand and Great Grandpa's ball peen hammer and negotiate a little tap or two there. Okay, it's a little tight, but I think. Yeah, it should be okay once I work it free a little bit. It's just a little... There we go. Yeah, one of the things I, I guess I didn't check, and I probably should have in the slicer, is where the, the seam is, because there is a couple of sharp edges along the track here for the slider, and I can kind of see where maybe the seam got, got put along one of those edges, which would cause this to be a little tighter. But I think that's going to be fine. Let's get some magnets in there and see. And there you go. I managed to break it. So, see, now that I broke it, it's, it's working great. So, maybe the tolerance was a little too tight. I'm actually going to save that and hit it with a little uh, CA glue, I think, to fix it. But, yeah, it's sliding pretty good now that I cracked the top. So, that tells me maybe a little more clearance. Um, maybe another, I don't know, 0 0.05. 0 0.1 seems like it would be too loose. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's cracked and it's working better now that I cracked it. So this is the way these projects go. It's just uh, time to iterate one more time. But regardless, I think this is a, uh, a nifty little dispenser. And who knows, maybe I'll tell you to forget this version when I come out with version 3 at some point. But for now, this is more than functional for how I'm going to use them. Cool. There we go. So that one works. This one works much better. Peel off a magnet there. Okay. Persuasion is done. That sticks. <laughs> that sticks. Cool. There we go. Okay, we're going to call this a wrap. Uh, thank you again for checking this out. I do hope you find these dispensers handy and functional. The Fusion files are included on printables.com, so you can pull them in and edit the parameters yourself to make these for pretty much any size magnet you have. So have at it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks. Have a great day.